big game against Georgia. I mean, they're uh, before the Tennessee game, they had won six out of their last seven and three in a row, so they're, they're playing well. You know, Wheeler's going to cause problems getting the ball in the paint. They're one of the better offensive rebounding teams in the league. They play fast, so that, you know, another team in the league besides us that wants to play up tempo and fast. So, got to keep them out of transition as much as possible. Got to try to keep Wheeler out of the paint. That's a lot easier said than done. And then we got to rebound the ball. And, you know, rebounding has been a little bit of an issue with us at times. I, uh, but those are the, the big keys. And offensively, you know, I thought we uh, we made a step in the right direction against South Carolina. I thought our effort was great. You know, to out rebound South Carolina was big, but the 22 turnovers were major problems. So we we got to cut down on turnovers. That's become a little bit of an issue. It, it it hadn't been for a while. You know, as fast as we play, you got to live with a few turnovers. But 22 is ridiculous. And, you know, we can't turn the ball. If we turn the ball over with them in transition, we're, we're going to lose the game. So that's the stuff we've been talking about. Uh, I'm sure I'll get questions on our health issues. Juwan Gary's uh, out for the game. Bruner's still out, recovering. Herb Jones is, has not practiced, but uh, has been going through uh, game speed workouts and we're going to evaluate him in the morning at a shoot around, see what we're going to do with him. But I mean, he's going to probably want to play. So that's why where we're at on the injury front. Everybody else is good to go. Thank you, coach. Uh, we'll start with Charlie Potter. Hey, coach, just kind of sticking with those injuries. Do you have like a timetable for, for Gary, how long he might be out and with her um, with the injuries to both Gary and Bruner's sitting him maybe almost off the table at this point? Yeah, I mean, and again, we I had a discussion with Herb and all of our seniors this morning kind of about a lot of different topics before we went into video and practice, but that was one of them that we brought up. I mean, with Jawan out, with Bruner out, you know, it'd be hard to sit Herb just with our depth and everything, and we're trying to, and we're trying to win the league, and we're, we're only two-thirds of the way through the league. We got a third of the – league season yet to go. We we gotta push through and try to win this. So I um and the other thing is playing doesn't set him back any further. Only if he takes like a hard fall, which is why we've been keeping him out of practice, you know, live stuff. You know, but getting out doing game speed drills and all none of that sets him back. So, you know, I we talked about it. I just it's hard. I mean, these teams are good. George is, you know, Herb's, you know, arguably our best player. You know, if he's capable of playing, even if he's not, you know, he told me before he was probably closer to 40%. Now he's maybe approaching 70%, which would be great to get him to 100. But sitting him out for a week doesn't guarantee that that's going to get him to 100. I mean, if he, if he plays and he doesn't take a hard fall, he's going to be just as good the next day as if he didn't play. So, yeah. Jawan being out is going to make it a little harder. And I will say, with how hard Reese played last game and how well Rowe played, you know, maybe you could play those two together a little bit more, four or five, because Rowe's getting really healthy again, playing great. I thought he's looked great in practice the last two days. So that does give us a little bit more flexibility because Rowe had been so banged up for a while and he's getting back healthy himself. Oh, timetable with Jawan. Thanks. Uh, they looked at everything, no surgery uh, needed. It's just a matter of how quickly he can get through rehab. Probably a couple weeks, maybe a little longer. It was pretty bad. I mean, the injury wasn't good. I mean, it was, some stuff was messed up there. He's still super sore, but it's going to depend on how quickly he can get through rehab. So, won't be available for the next few games at least. Next up, Tyler Martin. Yeah, and after the South Carolina game, you mentioned how proud you were of Reese specifically coming in there and filling in for Jawan, uh, and you know him being out against Georgia. Uh, what do you need from Alex, uh, kind of moving forward, um, stepping back into you know maybe a more role since he was coming off the bench again? Look, I, I just if you look at Reese's last four games, he played really well for two, and then he, he didn't play as well against Missouri. Then I thought he played great against South Carolina, so he's really had three really good games out of the last four. We just need him to give the effort he gave against South Carolina every every night out. 
take the good shots, you know, when his feet are set and he's stepping in and he's making threes, get back on the offensive boards like he was against South Carolina. Just do all that stuff. If he does that, I mean, he's really good for us and, and we're a lot better when he's in the game. So, you know, that's, that's what I anticipate him doing from now on. I mean, he's he and I have had really good conversations. Like, I'm really proud of really his entire attitude this whole year. Like, I can't say enough about what he's meant as a senior, what he's doing. So hopefully we get the Reese that, look, you know, we got at South Carolina moving forward from now on. But he, he was good in the two games before the Missouri one. The Missouri one just, you know, he didn't play well, but he wasn't the only one that didn't play well. A lot of our guys didn't play well in that Missouri game, to be honest with you. Cecil Hurt. Coach, depending on how the, the next couple of games go with, with um, Bruner and Juwan both out, um, any chance of, of seeing a little bit more of Darius Miles, who played a little bit, I guess, at, at South Carolina and Keon Ambrose Hill? Yeah, I was trying to get those guys some minutes. And, you know, when, when you haven't built up the trust with the staff and you, you know, you get a little bit shorter leash, you come in and screw up. You know, maybe you're not ready to play, but yeah, I mean, we Darius had been on the scout team uh, pretty much all year. We pulled him off the scout team for these last couple of days and moved him over with the uh, the other guys just so we got some reps with. You know, I thought he had a great practice yesterday, so hopefully we can get him some. You know, Keon Ambrose is, I mean, he comes in every morning like 6 a.m. every single day and just get to work out in. So he's a kid that's going to be really good. You know, he's got to get a little bit better feel. He's got to get a little stronger, a little bit more skill, a little, a little bit better at a lot of things. But I think he's capable of playing. This isn't a game where they've got, you know, like a Tillman size five. You know, they're a little, play a little smaller. You know, so if, you know, if we can, we'd like to get him. But again, the course of the game sometimes dictates going with guys that you've got a little bit more trust in, in game situations with throughout the course of the year. Let's go next to Mike Rodak. How much contact have you had with uh, A&M about the game next week? And just when do you expect to get a final decision on that well, one? Our uh, administrators said they talked to their administrators. And as of right now, they thought that they'd be back by next week. So we're planning on playing it. I, um, how, long they, how long have they been on pause? I don't even know. How long has it been? February 2nd, so the Sunday's the 14th. I got that down. That's Valentine's Day. So that it'll be two weeks, uh, I guess, Tuesday. So it'll be just over two. So it seems like two weeks has been a little bit, I guess somebody did two days once, but it seems like two weeks is more the standard. So I, my guess would be there two weeks to be done there and they'd be playing Wednesday. So that'd be my guess. That's, that's what we've heard from their administration at least. Let's go next to uh, Pat Forty. Hey, Nate, congrats on the season so far. Let's go, Pat, what, what, do, what do we got going that you're on the call today? <laughs> I got questions for you. Oh. Um, I, I was looking on, on Ken Pomeroy's stats. Uh, you and Gonzaga are playing the two fastest of anybody in the country on the offensive end, shortest possessions. What are the benefits of playing fast offensively? Well, I, all the analytics, I mean, we're big in analytics. All the analytics we look at, Typically, and now this doesn't happen every game, but over the course of a season, and we're we talk about expected value on shots and all that. Like so, over the course of a season, you typically get your most efficient shots in the first six seconds of the shot clock. So, if you're not trying to play in the first six seconds of the shot clock, you're not gonna get very many of those. And then, typically, the next most efficient come in the second six seconds of the clock. So, now we we've had some issues at, during parts of the year turning it over too much, trying to play too fast, or, you know, when the defense is back and set up, trying to ram it down their throat, like they're not back and set up and turn it over, taking a quick bad shot. But typically, and if you look at the NBA, which I like to study a lot of, you know, if they break down their 24 clock into first six, second six, third six, last six, like the most efficient first six, second most efficient second six. So we're, we're trying to get the most efficient shot we can. The goal isn't, I've told our guys this a lot, the goal is never to be the fastest team in America. The goal is to be the most efficient team in America. We think playing fast leads to being more efficient. But at times, if you do it wrong, which we have at times this year, it leads to being inefficient. So I think if you, if you, 
smart. Now, I'll say this, our, our offensive numbers, looking at Ken Palm, have been dropping for the last six games or so in efficiency, but part of that is we have not been healthy. I mean, when Herb Jones was healthy and we were able to create those advantages in the first six because he was playing with some thrust and, and we were, I think we got up to 10th, 10th or 11th offensive efficiency was at like our high at one point. It's dropped down in the 30s now, but you know, our turnovers have gone up. Our shooting hasn't been as good. Herb hasn't been able to create as much help because he's really banged up and that was a big part of it. But yeah, I mean, it's a long answer. I, I, hopefully that answered part of your question. It does. Um, a follow up to that. You've always played fast Buffalo and at uh, Alabama, but you know, statistically, this is your fastest team in terms of offense. Uh, was there a conscious decision to try to push it even more this year? Did you feel like you just, you had the guys to do that or has it just kind of worked out that way? You know what? I'll say this. Uh, typically, you know, if you look at our four years at Buffalo and then the two years now being our second year here, the better your defensive team is, I think the more fast you can play offensively because now you're playing off stops a lot more. So this is by far and away our best defensive team we've had. I mean, we were number uh, – we, we may still be number one in the country today. I think we were one yesterday. So if, if, if you're the number one defensive team in the country, you should be running off stops a lot more. When, when we were 114th or whatever we were last year, you're taking the ball out of the net way too often. And even though you got Kyra Lewis, who's – arguably the fastest point guard in the country, when you're having to inbound the ball before your possession all the time, then it's not, you're not able to get out and transition as much. So I, I think our points of emphasis are, are similar in playing fast. I just think when you're great on defense, you're able to play faster on offense. You're getting more rebounds, more steals. You're getting out off turnovers and uh, rebounds more. Thank you. Thanks, no Pat. Problem. Last question will be Steve Moulton. Hey, Coach. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, with Georgia tomorrow in particular, I seeing what they did against Tennessee, uh, tell me your thoughts on what you've seen out of Georgia so far this year, Coach. I mean, I think Georgia's much improved uh, in a lot of areas from last year. They're a better defensive team. They moved the ball better. They, they played it together more as a team. Um, They've got a really good plan. They're really well coached. Coach Kareem does a good job. You know, Wheeler's another year uh, in. You know, I thought he was really good last year. He caused us all kinds of problems last year, but now he's got that extra year of experience. So, I like, they're good. You know, I thought Tennessee did a really good job, you know, handling Wheeler. I'm guessing, you know, Wheeler's going to be really motivated after – struggling a little bit against Tennessee, come back, play well against us. Our guards got to do a really good job on him. Uh, they don't play a traditional big. They're like us in that sense. They're playing fast. They're playing, you know, Kamara's more of a four. And they're playing, starting them at the five, you know, got a spacing four that can shoot and really like another four that's more of a driver kind of playing their five, if you will. And then even their backup bigs are not big traditional post up. You know, they're more – kind of playing fast, playing small, playing spread out type of big. So they're similar to us in some regards in that way. But I mean, they're, they're going to test our transition defense. And then they get all over the old boards. You know, Kareen was an assistant to Izzo. And I uh, spent 11 years in Michigan. I know how Michigan State plays. And I, I used to work Coach Kareen's camps when I was back in Wisconsin. And he was at Marquette. And they, you know, big offensive rebounding kind of coaching family tree, if you will, and they're really good offensive rebounding team this year. So we're going to have to really focus on our transition D and keep Wheeler out of the paint and rebound the ball on the defensive end. So they're, they're, they're going to cause us some problems if, uh, if we can't take care of those three things. All right. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, folks.